For this, the last in our present series of fishing tales, join me and the Duke as we put spider wire smooth stealth braid through its paces on the canal. Well, I started my fishing out on the canals when I was a kid, but things have changed a little bit since then. In those days, I fished with a tiddler net first and then with maggots and a float. But nowadays, you're more likely to find people fishing with light lure fishing equipment than the traditional stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that because people are rediscovering what great places canals are to go fishing. A lot of people who try and lure fishing for the first time really struggle with the retrieve, particularly with some of these small soft plastics. It's not too complicated and in the winter and the colder months you definitely want to be working the bait quite slow. So cast it out, let it sink down to the bottom, obviously it'll take longer in deep water but when you're satisfied it's down, literally get a comfortable grip and with these light rods I like to fish like this with a couple of fingers either side of the reel stem and a th the thumb on top and literally just tickle the tip and wind up the slack. Tickle the tip and half a turn to wind up the slack. The lure fishing on the canal was initially a little bit disappointing. A week of hard frosts, the canal had been frozen two days earlier, had certainly taken their toll. But as is usually the case, as the day wore on, the fishing picked up. I've caught two of the smallest fish I've ever caught on lures, but what a delight they were. Absolutely fin perfect. But perhaps the most interesting thing happened just about 10 minutes ago when I was playing yet another small pike in the margins and a bigger one shot out from under the bank and literally clamped its jaws across it. You know, I played that pike for a good minute, minute and a half and it wouldn't let go and eventually I managed to draw it right up to the surface and I thought maybe I'd get a shot at netting both fish but unfortunately just as I put the net under the pair of fish the bigger one let go and swam away leaving me to unhook a rather dishevelled smaller pike which had got a little bit of damage on it but it'll be absolutely fine they're hardy things. So I've taken the soft plastic off then I've put a, a real small dead roach on it and first cast something sunny. And it's a pike. I love lure fishing. If there's even half a chance of catching the fish on an artificial, I'll always opt for it. But the Duke's more pragmatic. When the lure fishing's slow, well, why not try some bait fishing? So there it is, a beautiful little canal pike. Just goes to show if you persevere, you don't know what you're going to catch in these canals. Well, I've saved this one especially to show you. <laughs> Brownie might catch the big ones, but it takes real skill to catch little fish consistently like I am today. Mm. But what is amazing about this is it's just the most fin perfect, beautiful little Xander. Magic in miniature, that is. So I've got another little trick up my sleeve. I'm going to take a little break, but while I'm sitting here, I'm going to put a dead bait out. But this isn't dead baiting as you probably know it. This is dead baiting, still using that braided line, but with a quiver tip. Well, that worked. I've just baited. <laughs> so I've just baited up down in the edge with some chopped uh, fish. Yeah. And oh, I saw you doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I had the bite, it went round like a, a bloody barbel bite. <laughs> Did it really? Yeah. Oh, it's a, it is a Xander, yeah. It's a nice one, yeah. That's a nice Go carefully, bite. it's a single barbely hook on that. So. No problem. And so, the final episode of this series of Fishing Tales comes to an end. The Duke and I hope you've enjoyed watching this series as much as we've enjoyed making it. So until next time, tight lines. <laughs>